Brother Louis, I have good news for you today. You know, several months ago, we, we went out on outreach and um, Brother Louis was my partner that day and, you know, it was his first time. So we went knocking on doors and, you know, praying and, you know, bringing the gospel to the community like we always do. And I tell you, it was such a powerful time. But for Brother Louis, that was his first time. So, you know, we did that for a while, knocked on a few doors. And, you know, anytime we got to a door, nobody answered. We would do what we normally do. We would lay our hands on the door and bless every inhabitant on the door in the house. We will speak God's blessings over their lives. We will pray that God will give them a visitation and all that. And then we will leave some literature on the door. So we did that for a while and you know, after a while I asked Brother Lewis, would you also want to try? He said, no, 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 I'm not ready for that. <laughs> it was his first time. But then after a while, he's like, Apostle, I think I'm ready. I want to do it. Wow. I'm telling you, that's an exciting experience. It doesn't take much to do the things God has called us to do. And so, you know, myself and Brother Lewis, we, we started doing it. He started praying over doors and, you know, we met some few people we shared a gospel with. And then we knocked on a door and lady, in fact, before we knocked on the door, the lady came out. And she's like, I thought you guys were what? The UPS guys or something, FedEx guys? What is it? Aaron guys, kind of. And apparently she was just moved into the area and then, you know, um, we shared the gospel and we know we shared about our church with her and she said you know what i just moved into the area and i'm looking for a church wow. that really encouraged brother lewis brother lewis was so inspired by that that you know what well, it's not even just about going out there to minister to people who haven't heard about jesus but there are also people in a community who are looking for a place to call their church home and to fellowship with god and it encouraged her. Encouraged him. Now, we were hoping she would come to church. She never did. But then another time, we went into the area and we spoke to her again. And then yesterday, myself and mom decided to go on visitation. So we went knocking on her door. And guess what? When we knocked on her door, a young girl walked into the apartment. And we're like, is Laura your mom? She said, yes. This is my mom, so that's what she said. <laughs> and so, guess what? Mom comes out, and it's Sister Laura. And come to think about it, her daughter, Faith, had been to this church a few weeks prior, and we didn't know it was Laura's daughter. And guess what? We prayed with her family. We encouraged them again. And today, Laura is in church with her daughter, Faith. <laughs> Welcome. We are so excited to have you. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, this is the one thing God has called us to do. And today I'm going to share with you on something that would really open us up for the assignment. Because if all we come to do is to show up in church and have some good music and feel good, listen to some motivational word and go back and live our lives as always, we have failed the kingdom. Because the real job for us is to go into the world and impact the world with the gospel of the kingdom of God. Amen. And Angel, thank you for coming. Amen. We visited Angel yesterday and the family and they are also here. Thank you so much for coming. Well, this morning I want to do something different. You know, over the past few weeks we took a break. We were having service as normal, and then after the service, we will go into a time of study. But today, I want to use the entire service to teach what we've been doing after service because of time. Amen. Well, today, my brother is also in the house, Pastor and Reverend Kobna Kwanza. Let's put our hands together for the man of God. Amen. This is a great friend of mine. We've been friends for almost 30 years. And our friendship started on an interesting note. I used to work in, an, in a hotel. I was the cost control of the hotel. And he used to work with one of the international auditing firms called Deloitte and Touche. By the way, he's a, a certified public accountant, CPA. 
And so he had come one time to audit the company. And of course, when they come in to audit, I was a local guy. So they would come into my office and audit the whole organization and come to know he was a believer. We connected almost 30 years ago and our friendship has been one thing to the other. God has used us to do so many things. And today he's pastoring a huge church in, in Accra, Ghana. He's a full-time accountant and he's a full-time pastor i was looking at the amazing things god is using him to do his church is so powerful they are in the community he sits over 600 people every sunday doing amazing things in his church for god so let's celebrate the anointing of god over his life reverend kwanza god bless you for all you do for the kingdom we truly honor the anointing of god over your life amen let's put our hands together again and honor the man of god Amen. Well, this morning, we have spoken a lot about what it takes to surrender completely to God. We've been doing what we call ministry workers training, and that's what I'm continuing with. And today, I'm going to be talking about baptism. Amen. It might look very fundamental. It might look very basic. Baptism. Well, I got baptized 15 years ago. What's a big deal? Now, hold on for a moment. Hold on for a moment. Because you might have been baptized, but you haven't yet enjoyed the blessings of being baptized. Because you never understood the meaning of baptism. It's not just a ritual of being dunked in water. That is not it. It's way beyond that. There is a reason why God wants you to encounter the power of baptism. And there is an activation that must happen. Now, if you understand the power of baptism, you would realize that that was the only occasion that trapatite nature of God was made manifest. Bible says the son, Jesus, came into the water to be baptized. And as Jesus came into the water to be baptized, the Bible says the heavens opened and a voice came. And the voice that came was the voice of the father. And the father said, this is my son. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. And not only the Bible says the Holy Spirit also discerns. He discerns like a dove. It is the only time that triune nature of God becomes manifest at the same time. Jesus in the water, the Holy Spirit descended, the Son speaking at the same time. And you know what? When you begin to talk about the Trinity, a lot of believers have a problem with it. Now, what is Trinity? By the way, in case you don't know, Trinity is not written in the Bible. But it's implied. The fact that it's not written in the Bible doesn't mean it's not the word of God. It's just like the word Bible. The word Bible is not in the Bible. <laughs> There are so many things that are not in the Bible, but it's taught, it's implied, it is written and explained in the word. It's just like the word rapture. Rapture is never in the Bible, but it is implied as we study the word. So what I'm talking to you this morning about is something so special, something so dear to the heart of God when he talks about baptism. Yes, sir. Baptism must do something to you. Baptism must cause a turn around in the life of the believer. Baptism must bring a renewal to your spirit. Glory to God. And so look at what happens to Jesus. Jesus goes down to the, to the water to be baptized. And it blesses my heart to see Jesus surrender to baptism. If I joined the baptist said, no, I am not worthy to baptize you. You got to be baptizing me and not me baptizing you. And Jesus said, you don't understand. It's not about me. It's about those who are to come. There are so many things we see Jesus do in the Bible. It is not because he needs it. He does it because of you, because of me, because of us. Jesus will meet somebody who's, who is sick and he's like, how long has this situation been? As if he doesn't know. He's Jehovah omniscient. He's God who knows all things. What that simply means is that there is nothing he needs to learn to know. He knows it all already. That is who he is. Yet he asks. He asks this question not because he doesn't know. He asks because he wants us to learn through it. Glory to God. And so this morning we are talking about baptism. Say baptism. baptism. Come on, say baptism. baptism. Say baptism of water. Baptism of water. And baptism of Holy Spirit. Baptism of, 
that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Two types of baptism. And I want you to come with me to the book of John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Look at what the Bible says. We're going to read a lot of scripture. And I want to advise you on one thing. When you come to church, come to church with a notebook. Amen? Come to church with what? And what? A pen. Come to church with a notebook and a pen. And if you have a device, make sure you are taking notes. No, seriously. If there is anything we got to protect, it is the word of God. If there is anything we got to get serious about, it is the word of God. Some of y'all have cars. You take insurance on that car, right? Some of you even take what we call gap insurance. Very important. So that when that car breaks down, that car runs into an accident, you are protected. You want to protect your physical things, your material stuff. You buy a home, you want to take insurance over it. Some of us, we even have security cameras and what have you. All kinds of coverage just to make sure that our material wealth is protected. Forgetting that all these things that we have, we have them not because we worked so hard for them. It's simply because we received them. And in case you don't know, the only way you receive these things, these powerful blessings God has blessed you with, is through the word. Bible says there was nothing that was made that was made without the word. All these things we are craving for were made with the word. And so if there is anything we got to protect, it must be the word. Because the devil can take all these things from us, but if he is not able to take the word from us, we are guaranteed that these things he takes away, we can have them again. Hallelujah. Look at Job. Job said, the more you strike me, the more I believe your word. Because I know no matter what is taken away from me, your word will recreate my world. So he protected the word. He protected the word. He made sure that the word of God that is coming forth was protected. Bible says he cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What is he doing? He's going to do what? Steal the word of God. That is what the devil is seeking after. Not your husband, not your wife that you are overly protective about. It is the word. It is the word. He knows when the word of God is in your home, your home will be protected. So he wants to take the word away. Look at the battle in America to take the word of God out of our school system, to take the word of God out of the court place, to take the word out of everywhere. Yet this country was founded on the word. Yes. But the devil wants to take the word from every place. Now if I have the word, Bible says he cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now if you have a good understanding of the word faith, which is produced simply by hearing the word of God. Faith is produced by what? Hearing the word of God. Anytime you hear the word of God, faith is produced in your heart. There were things you felt, well, I can do this. I can do that. I can have that. My color won't allow me to do this. My accent won't allow me. I'm a minority. I cannot do this. No, you are all God designed you to be. And that community, the society doesn't have the power to determine what you are able to do. You can do all that God designed you to do. And you cannot shortchange yourself as long as you are living in the word. What is faith? Faith comes from a Greek word, pistis. P-I-S-T-I-S. Pistis. And pistis is simply meaning knowledge of, obedience to, and confidence in divine truth. Can I say that again? When we talk about faith, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen and all that. But the original root word simply means knowledge of. It means faith has three levels. Whenever you hear the word, it produces knowledge in your heart. That is just the first level of faith. That is why that level of faith can't take you far. Knowledge of. When you are exposed to a revelation, you just receive knowledge. And knowledge in, is never enough. You got to take it to the next level. So faith is knowledge of obedience to that is the second level of faith now the knowledge you have received the information you were just taught at church you are willing to apply it to your life that is the second level of faith amen that is why we can sacrifice all we want to sacrifice but if we don't walk in obedience we are not pleasing god bible says without faith it is impossible to please him that faith is talking about is the second level of faith when you have the knowledge and you are obeying that knowledge 
We know so many things, but we obey none of them. You know it's written there 65 miles per hour. That is knowledge. It's information. But it's one thing to know it and another to drive within the speed limit. 